Shalom. Shalom. Giving all praises to Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Shem Rakak with that Shalom to the 144,000 the rest of you elect out there. Shalom to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video. To the uttermost part of the earth, which is, I'm not. I'm just merely quote um, paraphrasing um, Acts uh, chapter one. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go to it real quick. Bear me for a minute. There it is right here, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. But ye shall receive a verse. Matter of fact, start at the sixth verse, Acts 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, They asked our Lord, uh, was shy, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom? to Israel or to the Israelites and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power so even our our savior Yahweh Shai doesn't know the time so he knows as, as about as much as we know concerning the time that he's going to deliver us because the Most High going to give him the word. But ye shall, but you, these starting with the apostles um, and the uh, the ones of us that teach are the elect, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and and in all Judea and in Samaria that's all in the Middle East that's all is the land of Israel, Palestine whatever you want to call it and unto the uttermost part of the earth as a matter of fact you know what I'm going to do And this is based upon some little, I went to Google and I put in Africa, Christianity going to Africa. Them people in Africa, they, they, out of the, they, they're gone. You can't help them. The Israelites over there in Africa, you, can, you might get a couple of them. You might get your twos and fews, but that's it. You got, uh, you know, the IUIC over there trying to wake up Africa. You ain't going to wake up Africa as a whole. And if you do, then you can say, well, Todd, you was wrong. The, the, the reason why, there's a reason why it says, and when the, when the apostles were on, on the scene 2,000 years ago, this is what they taught. They never, there's no history of them going to the, other, and on, on to the uttermost part of the earth or the fourth part of the world, the fourth part of the earth, Per uh, Revelation chapter six, and we may even go into that. Even that's east. See, the fourth part of the earth, or the fourth part of the world, 
And Revelation 6 is talking about the Western Hemisphere, uh, Canada, America, Central, and South America. So this is what that's talking about. That's on the other side of the earth. If you in the east, if you have a shy saying this in the east, and he say you're going to go to the uttermost part of the earth, that means you're going to go to the west, furthest west as you can go. What's the furthest west you can go? The western hemisphere. What lands are in the, are in the western hemisphere? Canada. America. Central and South America. Because you had Israelites over there. Gad, Reuben, and the rest of the northern kingdom. So I'm going to go to, uh, let me do this again. I'm going to go to Let me see what these commentators have to say. So our focus is on America. America, meaning the United States of America. The deliverance is going to come out of America. The elect that are scattered in other parts of the world, they're going to be picked up. But the great deliverance is going to come out of America. You're not going to have hundreds of millions of people come out of Africa because Africa is going to be intact. Okay, so this is Cambridge Bibles Bible. He shall receive power in Jerusalem and in all Judea, to which this district, all the. Uh, Ministration, ministration, ministrations of the apostles were confined till the death of Stephen. And in Samaria, whether the f first who went with authority was Philip, one of the seven, Acts 8 and 5, and afterwards Peter and John. So let's go to Acts 8 and 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached the Messiah unto them. That's when he met the Ethiopian eunuch, which was an Israelite that was living in Ethiopia. It says, And unto the utter, uttermost part of the earth, commenced by the preaching of Paul, Barnabas, Mark, Silas, and Timothy, and regarded as placed on a secure footing when St. Paul was once brought into the capital city of the world. Which, that shows you that <laughs> Paul never went to the other side of the world. Neither Paul, nor Barnabas, nor Mark, nor Silas, nor Timothy Paul, there's no history of the Apostle Paul coming to the Americas. If you go to Revelation 10, I believe that's the 10th verse, where it says, John, on the Isle of Patmos, you're going to prophesy again to many kings, people, tongues, nations, kings, whatever. I'm merely paraphrasing. When did that happen? Matter of fact, I'm going to go to that. I'm going to go to that. The writer keeps before him uh, from first to last the promise contained in this verse and leaves out of the narr of his narrative all that does not tend to illustrate its fulfillment the work of every agent is followed so far as he is used to bring about this result and no f and no further this will be noticed at each stage as we proceed 
See, they're giving me this mumble, this word salad, sounding like vocab, and it will be seen that it explains why among acts of the apostles, or acts of apostles, some works were included which were not carried on by apostles or by the apostles and why the histories of the chief agents are left incomplete. They didn't, they didn't have an answer. They, they, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They were right about this. Samaria, Judea, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Yahweh, and Samaria. But they, they, they were lost when you come down to here. Like I said, Paul never went to the, um, came to Americas. Not uh, Barnabas, Mark, Silas, Timothy. So they don't know. They don't understand reincarnation. They don't understand that the uttermost part of the earth is uh, is is over here in the Americas. So that right there proves that reincarnation is biblical. Let me do this real quick. Let me go to Revelation ten. I believe that's the tenth verse. Yeah, this verse right here is sweet in your mouth and bitter in your belly. That's why a lot of guys fall off. It's sweet at first, but then it gets bitter to them. Okay, 11 verse. And he said unto me, to John, the angel said to John, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So when did, when did, what's the record on John coming off the island and going back out there teaching? No record on it. Thou must prophesy again. Some try to make out that there is here a new commission given to the apostle, which is John, and that in the Remain, remainder of the book there are high, higher mysteries than in the foregoing part but it is surely simpler to take it as a personal warning to the apostle himself which is John he was to see the end of all things in visions yeah he saw the visions but it didn't say he was going to prop what does it say he was going to prop where's Where's the proof that he prophesied came off the island? But but his own earthly work and duties were not at an end. He had he had already prophesied before many people and nations and, and tongues and kings, whether Nero, which is Trump, or Domitian, which is the younger brother of uh, Titus, was the last of these. And he would have to do the same again. Yeah, he did have to do the same again. But in another life, in this time. So they don't understand reincarnation. None of these Christians, do you want to you want to stump a Christian? Go into go into reincarnation. Go to uh Matthew eleven and eleven or thereabouts. What does that mean about, and if you received it, this is Elijah, which is forth to come. Is that reincarnation? Not one Christian would agree. So anyway. So the place, the focus, the focus of this truth is here in uh, um, the Americas. Not Mali, not Nigeria.
Nothing panned out for you guys. Because you're doing your own will. You're doing your own thing. My 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 meat is to do the will of him that sent me and not and to finish his work. Not to my meat is to do what I want to do when I want to do it. So I put in Christi Christianity in Africa in Africa. I should have put it African history. Okay, and this is a interesting Interesting information. I went into the Islam, Islam in Africa, and they were trying to say, oh, the, the Arabs, they never force Christianity on the Africans. They, they just, the Africans accept, which is bullshit. Anytime another nation puts in the, on, on the second nation, the counter nation, in the captivity, whatever religion you you are, when you take this nation over, you're gonna say that's not the right religion. You gotta worship our God. So give me a damn break. Give me a damn break on that. Hey, this, uh, the Apostle Paul said, uh, uh, I believe that's 1 Corinthians 14, if they be ignorant, I'm merely paraphrasing, you know, just leave them alone. You know, you had the IUIC, uh, go to these, they had the church blitz, blitz. You notice they don't have no church church blitzes no more. Every Not knocking them because they did go out and, tr and try to wake up Israel, so I give them credit for that. But the, the, you ain't gonna get them people. You you get a a small percentage of people coming out of the church. The majority of us. Damn near all of us. Damn near all of us, were Christians. Traditional Christians. You're a former slave in America, you're a Christian. So I'm going to read this. Christianity in Africa first arrived in Egypt in approximately 50 AD. Uh, by the end of the second century, it had reached the region around Carthage. In the fourth century, the Ek. Somite Empire in modern day Ethiopia and Eritrea, Eritrea. This guy, uh, what's his name? Um, Nipsey Hussle. He's a tree, uh, Eritrean, but he could be a Jake and a comedian chick. <clears throat> So you had Jakes among them. They could be Jakes. But they actually, that's, that land mass is Kush. Became one of the first regions in the world to adopt Christianity as its official religion. And this is before Esau, you know, brought their brand of Christianity. When did Christianity begin in Africa? What religion did Africa practice before Christianity? Now I forget the name, Zimbato I think it's called, where there's these like tree looking things and they just dance around but their spirits in there, that's a, that's a big hoax, that's a big scam, it's a tourist scam. Mainly, mainly in like Nigeria and I believe Ghana. You know, there's videos on it where it dances around and they take the take the top off and there's a skinny person in there it's a big it's a tourist scam and they say that these are the, the Zimbato if I'm saying it right they're the guardians of the African people 
It's all a scam. Matter of fact, it's on. Let me see this. Let me do this. Let me go ahead and find this. Oh, this right here. NYC dis disputes claims migrant shelters aren't serving halal food during Ramadan. Now, these are these are a ham, um, from Africa, whether would it be of uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, uh, Sierra Leone, or whatever. But you can see that they're all black. They're all black people. I believe that some of the um, majority of them are Israelites. Some of them might be Hamites. But they're all, they when they came over here, the religion that they toted with them is a religion of Islam. So there's a big controversy of the food that they supposed to, because it was clearly, you know, given to the authorities that look we're Muslims we only eat halal food so so they were getting food and they, they weren't sure whether it was pork or whatever so that's that's making uh, the mayor look really bad he's this guy Eric Adams he's he's really looking bad he stay he stays looking bad the city's all fucked up the out, out of boroughs potholes Go to the fucking city. It's potholes all over the place. It wasn't like that during the time of Giuliani. Mayor Katcha. Jake don't know how to run shit. Well, Jake know how to run shit. They just, they just don't want to run shit. So where did I say I was going to go? Let me do this. Okay. You ain't gonna wake them people up in Africa. You're gonna wake up a handful. If you can wake up 1% of them, you good. This right here is uh, the Zimbabwe. Do you think this is cool or scary? They're called Zengbeto and they're the traditional voodoo guardians Zengbeto. of the night. Um, Zengbeto. And this is a, a person in there. And they're saying that there's a spirit in there. Ain't no spirit in there. There's a spirit, but a man in there who, who has a spirit. And this is among Jake. Uh, let me see. Voodoo, voodoo guardians of the night among uh, Ogu. People of Benin, Benin or Jake, Togo, and Nigeria. That's Jake. Jake is Jake is for the most part over there. You have Israelites living all, mainly the West, but a, a lot of Africa. But the West is big time. Jake over there, even in the East, and the North. So somebody. You can't say he's a, a Hamite. Like I used to be If you're from Africa, you're a Hamite. Well, no, you got to do deeper. See, you were going by one, the, seven of, the seven back at one west. Well, you were born in Africa, you're a Hamite. You, had Israel, you have Israelites in, in, in Africa, man. They don't know that they're Africans. So this is their traditional <laughs> religion, Zenbeto. Well, these things are called Zembeto. It says, for, it says uh, what religion did Africa pr uh, practice before Christianity? Forms of poly, poly, polythe poly, polytheism, polytheism, which means many gods, poly meaning many. So they were, mess, they were messed up. Before, they, before Esau got over there, before Esau got over there, they were messed up anyway, worshiping demons. And now some of them kept the law, statutes, and commandments and knew that they were Israelites. A lot of our people that went into captivity, they knew that they were Israelites. They were speaking Hebrew until it was whipped out of them. It was widespread in most of 
ancient Africa and other religions or regions of the world before the introduction of Islam, it was forced on y'all. Christianity was forced on y'all and Judaism. Now these Nigerians that have Jewish communities, they're following the small hats. Ex exception was the short-lived monotheistic religion created by Pharaoh Akhenaten. So this one Pharaoh said, you got to worship one God who made it mandatory to pray to his personal God, Atan, Satan. was Christianity used to colonize Africa. That got damn right it was. When they enslaved the, the Israelites and the other nations, they did it in the name of Christianity. When they had a, a bunch of slaves, they praised them, their God. Their Caesar Bogier. Africa, though there was some early uh, small-scale efforts, the major missionary activities from Europe and North America came late in the 19th century, which is the 1800s. It really started in the 1500s, end of the 1400s. When they started bringing the, the, the Southern Kingdom to the Americas, that was in the late 1400s and early 1500s. During the scramble for Africa, uh, Christian evangelists were intimately involved in colonial process in the colonial process in southern uh, South, Southern Africa. The word "colonial" is a nice colonial is a nice way of saying <clears throat> slavery, captivity. <clears throat> Christian evangelists were intimately involved in the co colonial process in uh, uh, Southern Africa. Colonial means, a nice way of saying slavery. <clears throat> and all of these <clears throat> evangelists, these religious people, the ones that were doing good, that had plantations, they had slaves. And like I said, they would praise Jesus for you know get blessing them with slaves but now they don't want to go into captivity we tell them they're going to captivity no we ain't going to captivity it's all about love we're supposed to love everybody God is about love yeah lo love among Europeans remember y'all referred to Jake slaves as not even a man he's three fifths of a man so they're really not men, so we're really not, they're animals. It's like you got a dog or a cat. It says, how did the Bible get to Africa? The Bible was brought to these parts of Africa uh, relatively recently. Initially, look at that, 1415. That's, that's before Columbus came to America. Columbus, I don't even believe he was born when, when this during this time period to 1787 with the wave of explorers. This is when this man started taking over the world. Uh, traders and ecclesial, ecclesial representative, meaning religious people of the medieval Catholic Church directed by Portugal, which are all Edomites. Who brought Christianity in Africa in the late 15th century, 1400s, Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus lived in the late 15th century, the end of the 1400s. Portuguese traders and missionaries began arriving in West Africa 
first in uh uh Gune, I'm Gu, Guini, if I'm saying that right. Matter of fact, let me do this. So I can pronounce it right. Is it Guinea? I believe it's Guinea. 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 West Africa, Jake. Guinea. Mer Meritania. Gambia. Ghana. Jake. Sierra Leone. Jake. Nigeria, Jake, and later in the Kingdom of Congo, Jake. Like I said, there's a mixture. There's certain Hamites sprinkled in among Jake. People that come out, people with great talent that come out of uh, these African, these uh, West African uh, countries are Israelites. Akeem Elijahwan is a Jake. Where they were, they, where they would find success in converting prominent local leaders to Catholic. So they worked on their leaders. You get to the leader, the leader get influences the people. So them people in Africa are all fucked up. The ninety nine percent of them are all fucked up. The two biggest religions out there is Christianity and Islam, which covers almost about ninety some odd percent of the religions, Christianity and Islam. So they fucked up. How did Christianity change African culture? On the downside, Christianity led to the demise of the African customs. You must destroy, destroy what they believe in, and then you give them something new, which it viewed as pagan and evil. The religion also led to the implementation of apartheid. Apartheid is when you have the ruling class ruling over the poor, the dirt poor. You go back to South Africa before Mandela was in prison for what, 27 years? It was under an apartheid. It's the, the the there was a small percentage of Edomites that rule millions of Africans. How the hell did how in the hell did that happen? To which it gives its theological support the, and undermine the leadership role of women. So so them Hamites some certain tribes. They had women that were over men. They got this one thing in in Africa, certain part of Africa, among Jake, where you got women that have multiple men. Instead of a man having multiple women. Let me read that again. On the downside, Christianity led to the dis demise of the African customs, which said that, that that African shit was all bullshit, which it viewed as pagan and evil. The religion also led to the implementation of apartheid. So the religious leaders, the evangelicals, the men of the cloth, they were the one that introduced 
Africa the apartheid system. So these people that are in the Christianity, man, just forget them. Apartheid. Let me uh, definition. Ain't saying too much on it. A few words. Apartheid was a system of instant inst 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 institutional lies, racist, a racial segregation that existed in South Africa and, and Southwest Africa from 1948 to the early 90s. So who implemented it? Christianity. Apartheid was a system of inst uh, institutionalized racial segregation. So this is what this man said. Look, we better than you. That's why we get all the money, we get all the gold, we get all the diamonds, we get everything. We get you. In South Africa, a policy of, or, or system of segregation or discrimination on grounds of race So this is what this man's Christianity brings to the world. And it's not Christianity, it's not true Christianity. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom. I'm on to the next one, shalom.